Book bros, boys and girls, book readers, book learners, book, book whatevers. It's the number one book bro. I'm back again with another video. Yesterday I looked at the HTTP response, no, HTTP request header sample. And today we're looking at the HTTP response header sample. So in that response, your HTTP response header, you have the version of your HTTP. TTP protocol. This is for slash 1.1. You've got a code here. This is 200, meaning that it's okay. You've got the date that the response is being sent, the server, the version of the server. This version, uh, this web server is Apache for slash 2.4.24. It's running in the Ubuntu operating system. Um, content length is 506, 506 bits, presumably. The connection is closed. The content type is text. It's HTML. You're, that's hyper um, text markup language. Character set equals ISO-8859-1. And so now let's break that down a bit further so you can see what some of this information means. I'll read the article. This is the response to the earlier request. The response with the HTTP version and HTTP status code of 200 means success in fetching data for this request. That's what the 200 means. The date, of course, is the timestamp for the request. The server, the Apache 4.2.4.24 and the Ubuntu operating system. The server feels tail tells the client about the software that is running on the server. That's the server that's running, sending the response. This usually also provides uh, attackers a lot of information as well. So this would be useful for um, reconnaissance missions for those nefarious actors. You got the content length 506. This field indicates the length of the message body of this response. And then you got the connection close. Um, the connection header indicates that the connection after this message will be closed. This is most relevant for persistent applications using HTTP. And the content type, text for slash HTML, character set ISO 8859-1. The content type of the information in the HTTP response body and any encoding standard used. So encoding, I think the encoding typically means how the data is secured, it's sort of, it's wrapped. So it's secured using a form of encoding on the character set. Um, also that, I think that, that that's an indication of how the information will be displayed back to you, depending on if you're in Finland or France or Spain, character set might be different depending on the language that you speak. That's what I think that means. All right, so sliding over here to the next page, the response body content. All right, first, I'm gonna read the article. The HTTP response body commonly contains the HTML that the browser renders on the screen. That's what you see. However, HTML is not the only content the HTTP response body can transfer. You can also transport any binary data, such as MP3, like music files, a zip file. Those are the compressed files. JavaScript, which is like a, uh, a coding language. JPEG for pictures and any other file formats. The data transfer starts with a multi-purpose internet mail extension. That's the MIME. That's the so you got the meme type, M-I-M-E type, to let the receiver know what kind of data is being transferred, All right? So this is the response body's content. The response body can contain the HTML that browser renders on screen. Again, once you make a request in your browser for a resource, the web server sends back that resource in the form of HTML and you're able to see that data on your screen. 
The response body can contain any data, HTML, MP3 files, JavaScript, JPEG files, GIF, GIFs, uh, and the meme type. That's the content type. It lets the browser know how to handle the data. All right? Again, this is from my my SANS SEC 5 2022 course. And this is the first book, uh, 522.1. And I have been studying web configurations. That's, that's web fundamentals and secure configurations. And 522.1. All right. Number one book, bro. Thank you guys for listening. Peace.